Good evening, all. I'd like to tell you of an interesting theory in regard to time. There are some who say that the past is never gone, that it still exists on a different plane. Everything that has happened in the world continues to be, although mortals are unable to see it. Let me put it this way. You're riding in a motor car along a one-way street. You pass a magnificent palace which you greatly admire. The street makes a turn, and your car turns with it. Now the palace is out of sight. You can't see it anymore, but it still exists. It's still there on the one-way street, only you're not permitted to go back for another glimpse. The past, like the palace, has not disappeared. You merely haven't been gifted with the ability to return to it. (laughs) Or so the theory goes. At any rate, suppose I told you I could take you into the past. Suppose I could flip back the years like the pages of a book once read and give you a second reading. What period would you choose to return to? The golden age of Pericles in Greece? The Napoleonic era? (laughs) You can't make up your mind, huh? Then let me make the choice on your behalf. I don't think you'll be disappointed. London, 1900. The gaslight and the hansom cab. Cobble streets and staid old English houses, mysterious and romantic. And to complete the picture, we'll choose a very foggy night to visit Loring Square. Here, Lily. Oh, help me, Don Frederick. Of course. <laughs> there. Uh, here you are, Carrie. Much obliged, Governor. Now, come along, Lily. Oh, it's so good to be home, Frederick. I'm glad you decided to keep your house. I've always admired it so. Well, it's your house now, my darling. And you can do with it as you see fit. Now, where did I put my keys? Uh, here we are. Frederick. Yes, my dear. The cabbie's still there. Eh? Hey? Why, so he is. Something you want, Cathy? No, no, a big pardon, Governor. Go on, off we go now. I don't get out there. Why was he staring at us in that way? <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea. He, he may have possibly had a nip or two, eh? <laughs> now, put your arms around my neck, sweet. Here, on the street? I'm going to carry you across the threshold. <laughs> Come on, it's the custom, you know. <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> There you are, Mrs. Sangler. You can now consider yourself officially married. Oh, put me down, darling. You know, I love you very much. And I love you, Frederick. Welcome home, oh. Mr. Sangler. Huh? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Lynch. This is your new mistress. How do you do, ma'am? How do you do? I hope you'll find the house in satisfactory condition, ma'am. I've been scrubbing and cleaning it for over a week now. Oh, it looks splendid, Mrs. Flint. I did everything but the cellar, Mr. Spangler. Oh? I wanted to wait until there was a man in the house before I went down there. The place is so dark and damp, it gives me the creeps. I'll put your things away, ma'am. Is your luggage outside, sir? I'll pick them up myself, Mrs. Flint. It's quite all right, sir. I can manage. She's... Rather odd, isn't she? Odd? Her manner, I mean. <laughs> Mrs. Flint is rather superstitious. But you'll get used to her after a while. I've had her for only a month, but I find she's very competent. Oh, I'm sure we'll be good friends. Do you want me to bring these bags up to the north room, sir? The north room? Why not the master suite? Oh, well, sir, I was thinking that the mistress of the first... Bring the bags to the master suite, Mrs. Flint. Do you understand? Just as you say, sir. Are you irritated just now, Frederick? Oh. Well, well, there are times when Mrs. Flint shows less than her usual amount of tact. Joyce and I had always occupied the master suite. I, I suppose Mrs. Flint imagined that you might prefer to change. Joyce was my friend, Frederick, as well as your wife. A man they can never become a cause for tact between us. I mean... I know what you mean, Lily. And it makes me very happy. Joyce was a wonderful woman. I never thought I'd find an even finer one in you. Let's look round. It seems so long since I've been here. Well, nothing's been changed. I've left it all the way it was when when Joyce died. Poor Joyce. It must have been horrible. I'm sure she 
Never knew what happened. It must have been awful for you too, Frederick. It's something I'd just as soon try to forget. Completely. Yes. This picture of Joyce on the piano is very nice. I'm sorry I meant to get rid of that. Get rid of it? Why? Isn't it obvious, Lily? But I don't Well, know. I do. I, I'm sorry, Lily. I didn't mean to snap at you. Frederick, darling, don't you realize how I feel about Joyce? You have no reason to be upset. I'm not upset, Lily. Now, let me have the picture. Give it to me, please. Very well. I'll put this away for good. The bags are in your room, sir. Thank you. Is there anything I can do for you, ma'am? Not right now, thank you, Mrs. Flint. Mrs. Flint, did you know the first Mrs. Spangler? Oh, no, ma'am. I, I've only been here a month. Oh, that's right. Mr. Spangler just mentioned it to me. She must have been a lady of taste, ma'am. This house was even prettier when I first came here. Before the master started to get rid of all her things. But he told me he hadn't changed anything. Oh, he's done a lot of changing. That picture over there is the only thing that... Why, it's gone. Yes. Mr. Spangler just took it away. Peculiar, isn't it? What is? The way those things upset him. I'll never forget what a rage he flew into when I started to go through Mrs. Spender's trunk in the attic. The first Mrs. Spender, that is. He shouted at me and told me to mind my... Mrs. Flint, I believe you have some work to do in the kitchen. Yes, so I have. Excuse me, please. Talking is another one of her habits which could stand improvement. <laughs> well, what was she saying to you just then? Why, she was telling me about... About what, Lily? Nothing, Frederick. Nothing at all. Come in. Good morning, ma'am. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Flint. I brought your breakfast. Oh, that was very sweet of you. Mr. Sander left the house over half an hour ago. He told me to give you these keys. Oh, they're the house keys? Yes. They're all there, except the key to the attic. Well, where's that one? Mr. Sander keeps it himself. He does? Why? That's something I never had the right to ask him, ma'am. Someone's at the front door. You can leave the train, Mrs. Flint, and answer it. Well, who'd come calling at this hour of the morning? Yes? Is uh, this Mr. Spangler's residence? Yes. Is Mr. Spangler at home? No, sir, but the mistress is in. The mistress? You mean Mrs. Spangler? The new Mrs. Spangler. Oh, I see. Uh, I'd like to talk to her, if I may. My name is Markham. Come in, sir. Thank you. You'll have to wait a bit. The mistress is just getting up. Oh, I'm in no hurry. I'll tell her you're here, sir. I'd appreciate it. The name was Markham, sir? Inspector Markham of Scotland Yard. Oh. Inspector Markham of Scotland Yard. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Spangler. I'm sorry to disturb you. Oh, that's quite all right. What can I do for you, Inspector? I was hoping to see Mr. Spangler. I thought it might be wiser to discuss this matter with him. Well, he won't be home until this evening. But in that case, perhaps I'd better relay my message to him through you. What message, Inspector? It's rather awkward to discuss it under the circumstances. I hope you won't take offense. Oh, I'm sure I won't. I uh, presume you know the details concerning Joyce Spangler's death? Yes, I think I do. My husband told me about it. Just what did he tell you? Why, she was in a horrible train wreck several months ago. The Scottish Express to Glasgow. The wreck occurred, that's true. Many people were killed, some of them practically unidentifiable when the bodies were recovered. And then there were some, of course, which were never recovered. I understood that Mrs. Spangler's body was one of those. The wreck occurred as the train was crossing a bridge. The river is a swift one, and we surmised that some of the victims might have been carried out to sea by the current. That's the way I understood it. According to Mr. Spangler, his wife was aboard that train. 
She was on her way to visit an aunt in Scotland. Yes. Of course, we only have Mr. Spangler's assurance that she was actually on the train. Just what do you mean, Inspector Markham? Joyce Spangler is now considered to be legally dead. It has come to my attention, however, that there is a possibility she may not have been aboard that train at all. Good evening, Patrick. Everything go well with you today? I... I had a visitor. Actually, he wanted to speak with you. Oh, a visitor? An Inspector Markham from Scotland Yard. And, uh... Just what did he want? I... I think you'd better see him, Patrick. It's rather important. But what did he have to say? He... He told me there was a possibility that... Joyce was still alive... He told you that? Oh, of course I know. It's ridiculous. How does the eminent inspector from Scotland Yard reach that rather startling conclusion? Doesn't it upset you? Upset me? Why? Well, we are... I mean, you and I... My first wife is legally dead, Lily, and you and I are legally married. The inspector from Scotland Yard is an idiot. Frederick, you can prove that Joyce is dead, can't you? Naturally I can. There's nothing to be upset about the most idiotic blunder I ever heard of. And Inspector Markham's superior shall hear about it from me. He also asked me a few other questions I couldn't answer. In regard to what? Joyce's estate. What did he say about Joyce's estate? He wanted to know how much money she left and to whom the house belonged. Before her death, of course. I see. I told him I believed the house was yours... And that as far as I knew, Joyce left no money. It was only a guess, but I was right, wasn't I? You were wrong, Lily. Wrong? It's something that's too obvious to hide. Besides, what have I to hide? You mean... I inherited the house and 50,000 pounds in cash when Joyce was killed. Do you find it unique to return to the past, to roll back the years and witness an episode in the lives of two people? Yes, two people who existed over 50 years ago in London, while Victoria was still the queen. And for all we know, according to that theory of time I mentioned before, those two and their drama of life and death may still exist today. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Sanger. There's a Mrs. McIntosh here to see you. Mrs. McIntosh? Oh, so home. Yes, ma'am. This way, please. Thank you, Tangy. Good evening, Mrs. Stangler. Good evening. I guess you don't know who I am. I'm afraid I don't. I'm Joyce Stangler's aunt. Oh. Oh, yes. You live in Scotland, don't you? She's mentioned something about me then. Aren't you the aunt Joyce was going to visit when she was... when she was killed? Yes. Poor child. She was on her way to spend a week with me in Glasgow, or so the story goes. I beg your pardon? Is your husband at home, Mrs. Stangler? No, he's not. Good. I was hoping I wouldn't have to meet him. Yes, well, I've no use for the likes of Frederick Stangler. Mrs. McIntosh, haven't you forgotten that you happen to be referring to my husband? I haven't forgotten it. And I'm saying it for your own good. Why are you here, Mrs. McIntosh? I understand there's a picture of my niece in the house. A picture I should be pleased to have, if it's all the same to your husband. If you ask him for it, perhaps he'll give it to you. I've no intention of asking him. I'd like you to do that and send it home to me, if you will. I want no part of your husband in any shape or form, as the saying goes. If you please, Mrs. McIntosh. You needn't be offended. Perhaps you don't know as much about Frederick Spangler as I do. Perhaps you haven't discovered yet... What poor Joyce discovered. Discovered? What? What kind of a man he is. Joyce was afraid of him, Mrs. Spangler. She lived in deathly fear of the man. She told you that? <laughs> she didn't have to tell me. I could see it in her eyes when she spoke of him. And sometimes, when she'd be alone with me in Scotland, I'd hear her shrieking in her sleep. 
And the thing she'd say would make your blood run cold. She'd deny it later. And now I know why. I, I don't believe a word of it. The more fool you. If you want to treat yourself to a living death, you can... Stop it. Don't say another word. I have a business in my house. Very well, Mrs. Spangler. Suit yourself. There's just one thing I'd like to add. And you'd do well to keep it in mind. Two days after Joyce's body was supposed to have disappeared in that train wreck, I received a letter. A letter? From whom? From Joyce. And you know what she wrote? She wrote that she'd changed her mind and that she wasn't coming to Scotland after all. Lily, my dear... Are you asleep? No, Peggy. I'm still awake. I won't turn on the light and disturb you. Did you see the inspector? Yes. What happened? Nothing. Well, what did he say to you? It was merely routine. Frederick, you're holding back. Don't talk like a child, Lily. It irritates me. I'm not holding back a thing. The incident is over. Let's forget it. It isn't altogether over, Frederick. What do you mean? Mrs. McIntosh arrived in London today. What did she want? A picture of Joyce. She'll whistle for that picture before she gets it from me. Why don't you send it to her, Frederick? Because I'm not interested in doing Mrs. McIntosh any personal favors. Is that clear? Rick, you've never talked like that before. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Terribly sorry. I... Oh, Lily, forgive me. Please, don't kiss me. Very well. Just as you say. Frederick. What is it now? Mrs. McIntosh said... She said... Well, out with it. She told me she'd received a letter from Joyce just after the accident. A letter? The letter said that Joyce had changed her mind. That she'd decided not to go to Scotland after all. So that's what the inspector was up to, blast him. Frederick. The old owl must have shown him that letter. What does it mean? Nothing. Joyce had changed her mind. But I persuaded her to go anywhere she'd planned. I see. You believe me, don't you? I asked if you believed me, Lily. Of course. Of course I believe you. Well, then there's nothing to worry about. So long as you believe me. Nothing in the world to worry about. Go to sleep now, Lily. Pleasant dreams. You asked to see me, Mrs. Smith? Yes. I'm leaving your service, Mrs. Spangler. You are? Why? Because I can't stand this house any longer, that's why. But I don't understand. I'm sorry, I can't give you notice. I'm leaving tonight. <laughs> So sudden. Oh, I'd hate to tell you the reason why I'm on my way. I, I just hate to tell you. I think you owe me that much of an explanation. You haven't heard the gossip? I haven't heard what, for heaven's sake? They're saying, Mrs. Spangler, the first Mrs. Spangler was murdered. Oh, no. Everyone in the neighborhood's been talking about it. They're saying this is a house of death, and the poor Mrs. Spangler's ghost haunts the attic room. And you believe that? I've reason to believe it, let me tell you. And Scotland Yard has reason, too. They'll be finding out a thing or two one of these days. I only hope it's not too late for you. Be quiet, do you hear? Lily. Oh, I was just telling the mystery. I heard what you told her. Well, there are my sentiments, Mr. Sander. Be quiet. Magic. Get your things and leave this house before I drag you out myself. Don't you dare to lay your hands on me, you hear? Don't you dare. Get out. Oh, everyone is gossiping, are they? Mrs. Flint isn't responsible for what she says, Fritchie. They think I'm a murderer, do they? Rich, please. Well, let her go. I'm glad to be rid of her. I'm glad to be rid of them all. Now I can feel this spied on. I prefer being alone. And you prefer being alone. Don't you? Don't you, Lily? Yes. Of course I do. Oh, 
for some, the hands of the clock moved quickly. But for Lily, each minute seemed an hour. It's ten o'clock, Lily. Yes. I think I'll turn in. Are you coming? No, I, I'll stay up a while. Aren't you tired, Lily? No. Don't lie to me, Lily. Lie to you? I don't trust you, do you hear? I don't trust anyone anymore. You're all spies and you're all against... What are you saying, Frederick? Lily, is it the attic that bothers you? The attic? Is it because I keep the key to the attic and you've never been inside? I... I haven't even thought about it, Frederick. You're lying again, Lily. No, I'm not. I said you're lying! Shut up! Hmm. Next time you lie to me, my darling... I'll close my hand when I strike you. How dare you? <laughs> I'm your husband. I'm getting out of this house. Oh, no, you're not my dear. Go to my house. First, I want to satisfy that curiosity of yours. What do you mean? You and I are going to visit the attic, Lily. Now. Shall you open the door? Or shall I? Let me go, Frederick, please. Stay where you are, Lily. Uh, step inside, my dear. It's so dark in here. Well, I light a candle. There you are, Lily. Look around the attic. I want you to make a thorough search to reassure yourself. I have nothing to search for. No? Tell me what you know, Lily. <laughs> Show me what you know and I'll tell you what I know. Frederick, let me go. I love you. Oh, 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 oh. sharing her wealth. Then, believing the police were almost on top of you, you tried to blend onto me. You mean you married me just to prove I killed her? I happen to have loved my wife, Lily. Mrs. Spangler's intention to visit her aunt and the train wreck were lucky coincidences for you, Lily. But not lucky enough. Apparently, I made a very bad mistake, Inspector Markham. Yes. And the gallows, Lily, were made for people like you who make mistakes. Over 50 years ago was a long, long time. And yet, couldn't it have happened today? And now I'll take you back again from out of the past into the present. My theory of time was an interesting one, don't you think? 
But the story of Lily Spangler was just that. A story and nothing more. And it stands to reason that if the story is fictitious, the theory is a fraud as well. And yet, if you ever get to England, you might visit the Tower of London and consult the execution records. In the file marked November 1900, you may possibly find the name of Lily Spangler. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station, written by Lawrence Clee and starring Hart McGuire. You heard Carly Neville and Richard Davies as Lillian Frederick. Also in the cast were Dorothy Dunkley, Nigel Lovell, Winifred.